uh, I'm going to talk about the cohomology ring of the Hilbert scheme. Okay, so I changed my notation a little bit. So x first is a surface. For example, uh, such as C2 or P2 or K3 surface, etc. Uh, I use uh, a new notation, which I, I kind of used to this notation. <coughs> so this stands for the Hilbert scheme. Yeah, this is a Hilbert scheme of points Hilbert scheme of point of n points, n and n many points on X. So uh, this uh, has two expressions. One is a zero dimensional closed uh, sub scheme. of x of length n or it can be regarded as uh, ideal sheaves I suppose I call this uh, uh, closed up scheme to see the sub scheme so it has ideal ideal sheaves of ox uh, with colon um, uh, this O C, which is uh, th 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 this is uh, O X over the uh, ideal. This is N. Okay, so this has a, a map to the symmetric product. So I use this for the symmetric product. So this is just uh, by definition symmetric product. This wrong bracket will be stand for the symmetric product. So there's a map from here to here, and uh, this is non this is singular. Uh, this is smooth. Okay. So 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 Hilbert scheme can be regarded as a, a resolution of the symmetric product. So this, this is a resolution, and not only that, something called a prepend resolution. Okay, so, um, so I wanted to study the cohomology ring of this uh, space. So last time, um, I mentioned a little bit of uh, Nakajima's work. So let's just recall a little bit, because I'm going to use some notations there. So um, so basically, um, um, the result is uh, there, there, there are geometrically constructed so I will not do the definition because I did last time already, but uh, it's not important to, for us now to know what the ge geometric construction is, but we just need, need to know there's some, some operators there. There are geomet geometric construct operators <coughs> called, uh, I'm going to use this A, K, alpha. So here the K can be integers, positive, negative, k equals zero corresponds to zero operator. So zero basically does not uh, play any role. This alpha is a cohomology class on x. Okay, so there are geometric, uh, geometrically constructed uh, operators, geometrically constructed. Geometric construct operators uh, they satisfy some commutation relation, which is a Heisenberg commutation relation. So let me write down this relation. 
k alpha, a k beta equals minus k delta k plus sorry l k l k plus l zero, the integral alpha cup beta over x. So most of the time, these two operators commute. Uh, but uh, in some cases, not commute. It not commute when k, when l is minus k, and also alpha cup with beta integral on x is not zero. Then it is not commute. The commute that's a commutation relation. So this minus. This is called a creation operator. And the positive for k positive. Then this uh, a a k will be called an annihilation operator. So uh, the combination of Nakajima's and uh, Gertrude's result says the following theorem. This is a combination of Gertrude's formula for Betting numbers plus Nakajima's construction. says that um, this capital H defined to be uh, defined to be uh, I just add all the cohomologies for all the n together. So this is the infinite dimensional vector space. And this H, these operators act on H by the geometry. And this uh, this edge is so-called the highest weight uh, irreducible representation. Representation of this uh, Heisenberg algebra. This a uh, k r of us. So the, 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 the so-called highest weight, the highest weight is so-called, uh, we denote by the vacuum. It's just one inside H0 of X0. But X0 by definition is the point. So this is just um, over C, it would be just over C. Just C, you take a unit in there. Because here, I end stuff on zero. So there is H0, uh, X0, H0. So that's, that's the first one. So highest weight means that all the others are, can be written as uh, 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 coming from the highest weight then multiply by the creation operators. So in that sense, so, 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 so therefore, h star xn. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Yeah. This operator acts from a k alpha will add from edge to edge. So if you want to do component wise, yeah. so that will map edge star uh, xn to edge uh, star xn plus k, n minus k, n minus k. If k is negative, if, if, if if k is negative, you increase. Okay, so, so, so the sign somehow is kind of confusing. It's just opposite of what you think. So may, maybe let, let me make this minus k. If k is positive, then this goes to plus k. The star means a direct sum. I'm not saying that these two stars are the same. The star is star means the star means direct sum of h uh, l. L from zero to top dimension. Okay. So the operator acts on this uh, uh, this uh, this capital H as infinite dimensional vector space. It satisfies this Heisenberg relation. Okay. That, so so this theorem says that uh, so as a corollary. As, as a corollary, so that says that uh, this implies 
that um, um, we have a basis for H. So H has a basis. I should not say basis. Maybe it, it, it has a basis, but if basis of this type, uh, A minus N1, alpha 1, this is the operator, creation operator at a minus R of A uh, uh, K, R of K acting on vacuum. So these Ni's are positive N1 plus 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 N K. Sorry, 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 not not this H. This 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 sorry. X N. This finite dimensional uh, space has a basis. So uh, this equals N. Okay, so because of this, you start from the vacuum. This this becomes H, N K. You continue. You get H N K plus H N K plus one. Eventually, you reach to N. So you do uh, this many times, you get N. And this R of us is a basis, a basis of uh, this from a basis choosing from a basis of uh, uh, H star R. Uh, I just start X. Okay, so I can say the following thing. So Nakajima's work together with Gertrude gives us an uh, additive structure of the cohomology, which means we know the basis of the cohomology as a vector space. Okay, as has a basis as a vector space. So, all, so, so this will be the basis. Okay, so now I want to study cohomology rain. So how do I study cohomology rain? Now I treat this as a modular space. As I said, that this is a modular space of ideal sheaves. So uh, if you so so the Hilbert scheme is a modular space. In, in fact, it's a fine modular space. Fine modular space means that it should have a universal family. So the universal family can be described as such. So first, I define a universal subscheme. Okay, so this is the N. It's the def definition is very simple. It's just the, the most natural way you can think of a subset in here. That's a, a close-up scheme together with a point here, such that the point lies in this subscheme. So for example, if, if the n is 1, okay, so the Hilbert scheme of one point is just x itself, then this z1 is just the diagonal inside x cross x. Okay. So this is a very simple uh, subset. So this subset is a sub-variety. It has a skin structure. So it has a Skin structure. So this is the universal family. Okay. So there's a two projections here. One is pi two, or pi one to x n. Then there's another projection called pi two to the second factor. So universal family means is a is is a sheaf on the product whose restriction to the fiber give you the subscheme here. So which means that, that if you take a C here, this restriction to the C cross X, in fact, is just O C. The structure shift of the subscheme represented by this subscheme. Okay, so this is universal family. So now, 
then we consider consider the pull push forward of O C the N. So this is a sheaf. So 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 O Z so O Z N is in the in in a product. I push it forward to to downstairs. It becomes a sheaf here. And you can compute that the rank. This is a vector space. Is a vector space of rank equals dimension of oak C, which is n. Okay, so that's the definition of. Uh, I mean, you, you you want to compute the the fiber of of, of this vector bundle. You just consider what happens if you restrict to the C, and you see restrict to C happens to, to O C. It's a vector space of dimension n. So it's a vector space of rank. Uh, sorry, it's a vector bundle. It's a vector bundle of rank n. So it's a bundle, then it has chunk classes. Then it has the first chunk class. And the second chunk class and uh, rank n, you can talk about n's chunk class. OK, so uh, Manford has a, there's, there, there's a folklore called the Manford principle. Probably it's not formulated by Manford. Probably it's formulated by somebody else. But now we call it Manford principle. Manford principle says that if you have a modular space, then if you have a fine modular space, then you have a universal family. Then you can take a chunk classes of universal family. Uh, then these chunk classes sh should generate the cohomology ring. So, which means the Kunis component. Of, uh, of 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 uh, chunk classes of these things should generate uh, H star X n as ring generators. So in certain sense the Manford principle say, tells you, uh, I give you a way to find the ring generators. In the, okay, so so that's so definitely we should look for turn classes. Okay, so let's look at the first turn class. Okay, first class turn class turns out to be crucially uh, important. So let's let's define. So I, I'm going to use new notation. So this stands for the push forward. Okay, so with this notation. So this is vector bound of rank n. I can take a first chunk class. So it's a cohomology class. You can take a cup product. So this is a cup product. Then you get operator from the cohomology to the cohomology itself. Just by taking the car product. So therefore, you can define, uh, you, you, the, so, so the idea is to treat the friction class as operator instead of as a class. And then you define so-called a, a boundary operator. So this is a sigma sum, this definition, sigma sum of C1 OXN. You add all together. Okay, you, so when, when n is 0, is just, just uh, 1. So this will act from H to H. Okay. So H is the direct sum of all the cohomologies. So each first chunk class acts on, on, on here by itself. Map this space to itself. Then you can add them together, it will map edge to edge. 
Okay, so uh, the important result, the first, the breakthrough, I think, in this direction is that uh, Lin found a, somehow determines this, uh, this version class. What do I mean by saying determine the version class? I determine the version class in terms of uh, Heisenberg operators. Okay, so let me write down his result. The first result is the boundary operator, just the version class, take a car product, in fact, equals minus half sigma sum KL positive. So I, I will explain this formula later. So let me write down the formula first. Uh, minus K plus L, A K, A L, uh, push forward of X. I will explain what this means later. And then there's, uh, there's another term minus uh, sigma sum K bigger than zero, K minus one over two, A minus K, a K can hold class. Okay, so, so first let me explain what this these two what these what these are. Okay, so basically T K it just map X to X cross X K times by mapping a point to point, point. So if K is two, T2 is just a diagonal map. Map X to the diagonal. So what is the T3, uh, T3 star? T3 star, a TK star, is just the map from the cohomology of X to the cohomology of X cross, cross, cross X K times. So uh, this uh, lower star usually refer to the push forward of a homology. So, but I just use Poincare duality. You have a class, take a Poincare duality, becomes homology. Take a push forward, you get homology. Take a Poincare duality inverse, you get cohomology. Okay, so, so, so that, that, that's the push forward. Okay so, so, okay, so therefore this is a cohomology class. This is X, X will be due to a cohomology class here. You take a push forward. Kanho class is a cohomology class. You take a push forward, you get here. Then what does this mean here? This means that there's a Kunis, the, uh, Kunis theorem says that this is, a, um, uh, this is the tensor product of these guys. Okay, so this is Kunis theorem. So therefore, for example, here, let's just do, 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 uh, do, do something here. So this equals sigma sum, you can have three components. So uh, you get a i1 tensor, a i2 tensor, a i3. Then this notation just means sigma sum, this sigma sum of a minus k put r1 here, a minus l put a i2 here, uh, a k plus l put a i3 here. Remember that our oh, Heisenberg operator always have this here. So this is element in H, uh, uh, in, is a cohomology. So this A I1, A I2, I3 will be one of these. Maybe let me write alpha instead of A, alpha, alpha, alpha. So that's, that's this notation, similar for this notation. Okay, so this K L are all positive. So, uh, so as I said, this is an annihilation operator Q sense, basically this is a differentiation, this is a derivative. This is just a multiplication. This is one multiplication, two derivatives. This is a deri multiplication of the derivative respect to the, this variable and then you multiply by this variable. Okay, so this is a theorem by, uh, this is a result by, uh, by Lee, yeah. Hmm? Uh, the, the action, uh, all these operators act on capital H. 
which is direct sum of this. So the so the first term class no, for I, each I, I n. Let me, I think I, I didn't catch that part. You mean here? No, no, it's alpha of i1, alpha i2, alpha i3. Oh, oh, I see. OK. That is in, the, that is the, uh, in here. Right, and, and then you, then what? Then, then you put, put here. Here? OK, yeah. Oh, okay, so, 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 so let me write more clear, carefully. A minus K mean M is A, K plus L, for example. Suppose I have a class, I have sigma sum, alpha I1 tensor alpha I2 tensor alpha I3. This, I define this to be sigma sum, this, this sum. A minus K, I put this here, alpha I1. A minus L, alpha I2. Uh, a uh, k plus l alpha i3. So these are those operators. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those these operators. Yeah, this is notation. Yeah. Uh, acting on uh, acting on edge. Yeah, yeah, map edge to edge. Yeah. So 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 the Hasen so the the the, the cohomology can be expressed in terms of Heisenberg operators. Originally, there's no relation, but somehow there's a relation. Okay, so that's one uh, theorem. That's one result, and uh, there's another one. So this is the first <coughs> result. The second result is um, so. So for this construction, we can somehow um, generalize. For example, if we have um, so, let me do it here. So suppose suppose uh, V is a vector space of a ve vector bundle on, on, on X, we can take, um, uh, we can take um, uh, OZN. So OZN, so remember, uh, ZN is a subspace, subset of the product. So OZN is a sheaf on this product. We can tensor with pullback of a vector bundle. So vector bundle V is a vector bundle on X, we can pull that back. So it becomes a vector bundle here. We take a tensor product, then we then we all can we, we also can take push it forward. Okay. And you can take a chunk character of this guy. Okay. So uh, I just use a notation, I define this chunk character to be V. Of that, so this is just a notation. I define. I, I just I just call this complicated expression to be v bracket n similar to this. Okay. So I take a chunk character of this this thing. So that means uh, rank plus first chunk class plus second chunk class plus top chunk class chunk characters. Okay. So then there's another result uh, saying that uh, there's a sum relation. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, not dividing. I'm saying that this is notation. Oh, that's not notation. Notation, notation. Oh, yeah, I just didn't know this complicated stuff. I don't want to write every time. <laughs> this is notation, yeah. Okay, so the second result is that uh, the, this turn character of, um, of this V, in fact, he, his result uh, include, uh, also for the K, K, K class. That's similar, okay. Once you know this, you know K class. A minus one alpha with one particular chunk character. Uh, like a, a commutation with a particular uh, Heisenberg operator, minus one, this is the creation operator. So this equals expression, uh, ex exponential of a joint of this boundary operator act on, act on A minus one here I have to modify the term character of V, then cup with this alpha. Okay, sorry, I don't match space. So this adjoint 
always means this operator, okay, the commutation operator. Okay, so uh, these are the results he obtained. Okay, so uh, then uh, in a joint work with uh, my collaborator Chen and Wang. Yeah, okay. This theorem is very complicated. Okay. And this theorem is relatively easy. Okay, this theorem is relatively easy. You're coming from an uh, exact sequence. Exact sequence, and then you take chunk characters. Ah, so it's not just plug in no, it's not plug in. Yeah, this yeah. comes from geometry. Okay. Yeah, you have an exact sequence of some sheaves, uh -huh. then you, you take chunk characters. Somehow, this commutation relation can, can somehow can be verified in this way. So this is, uh, this is a, a, a very, very uh, uh, deep result. It's very complicated to verify. Yeah, so uh, in the first place, why this, this, um, this operator can be expressed in terms of Heisenberg operators is, is not obvious. But somehow, once you get it, of course, you see, oh, okay, it, w one should do that. But uh, somehow, he, in his, uh, re he, he proved this, uh, this, this result. Very long computations. Yeah, there's a reason because, um, <clears throat> as I said, I raised. So um, the cohomology group yeah. can be represented in terms of Heisenberg operators. Right. So if I want to know Heisenberg operator action is known. Excuse me here. So if I want to know the, the first term class, one way is I, if I can express my chain classes in terms of uh, uh, Heisenberg operators, then I know how it acts on the basis. Then I know the action. Okay. Yeah, so uh, that's, that's a different point of view. Okay. Uh, usually when you de determine the cohomology ring, you find the generators, you find the relations. Okay, here it's, it's more because we already have a, a Heisenberg um, algebra, so we, we find the generators. In fact, we don't find the relations. We express the, Heisenberg, uh, the, 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 the generators in terms of the Heisenberg operators. Okay, so, uh, so, so then we define, so uh, here, for arbitrary, for arbitrary any gamma inside here, which may not be uh, algebraic. So here is algebraic, K group. Okay. But V is basically is a variant bundle, K group. So it's a, 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 any topological cohomology class, we can define an operator called a gamma n. Basically, is is the chain characters, is the chain characters of uh, of uh, of this type. But uh, we we use kind of uh, Grossman-Dirac remark to write in another way. But if you know Grossman-Dirac remark, you know it's similar. To, it's basically it's chain chain characters. Push it forward of chain characters of OZN, Todd class uh, pullback of Todd class of X, pullback of gamma. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so this lies, this is a cohomology class in here. Okay, so this, this if, you, if you know Gostantin Rock, this is a chain characters of uh, something like this. So first we define this. Okay, so define this. Then we, so there's n here. Then we add them together. We use script r. This is sigma sum, n from zero to infinity. So this is a, a kind of a game we use all the time. We cannot do things on individual uh, Hilbert scheme. We, we, but, but we should add them all together. And then we can get a neat, uh, nice result. Okay, so, so we add them together, and uh, okay, so let's see. Um, we can also write this, uh, something like, a, it's not quite chain character, but it's almost like ice chain character. So this is sigma sum, n from zero to infinity also, i gamma n. So what is, I got this, this guy, I, gamma n, 
is just the, the component. This is the, the, the H um, uh, S plus 2I <coughs> component to, uh, where this S S is, S is this S. The gamma is a cohomology class of degree S. Okay, so this is a little bit technical, but basically it just says the, the I's chunk. So if gamma is, is trivial, this is just the, the, the I's, cohom, I's chunk character. Okay, so let me write it down. Maybe uh, the G1xn, when gamma is trivial, gamma is 1x. So this is just uh, the chain character <coughs> of <coughs> O, X, N, okay? So just chain character of, of this bundle. For example, G1, in this case, G1, 1, X, N, is just the first chain class of this guy. So basically, we are generalizing uh, this construction for arbitrary cohomology class. Average comma class. Okay. Okay. So then we can prove the following thing. So let's call this. Uh, let's call this one. This is one formula. This is second formula. Let's call this third formula. Then we modify this formula. Three prime. We modify this formula. Okay. Similar to this. The proof is also similar. So formula is uh, this is not two. This is two. Okay. I I use different notation. So this is the first result, second result. Second result is a third formula. For, for first first formula is Nakajima's formula. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Nakajima formula is first. This is second formula for oh. first chain class. For arbitrary chain class, it's a third formula. Yeah, yeah, arbitrary chain class. Yeah, chain characters, arbitrary chain cla characters. Okay. Okay, so uh, have a s we can have a third prime, which is ice chain character. Basically, this ice chain character can mute with this A minus 1 alpha, similar to this, A minus 1 alpha equals 1 over k factorial uh, a minus 1k. I will explain what this means later. Gamma alpha. So gamma, so gamma is, remember, gamma is a cohomology class in here. Alpha is also a cohomology class here. This means just car product. So, so what, is, what is prime? The prime, a minus prime, it just means the commutation relation with the derivative. Double prime means you do, uh, you do uh, if it's k, means you do this commutation relation k times. Okay. Because I know the second uh, derivative. Uh, for, I, mean, I, I, I know the, the boundary operator. This is called a boundary operator. First, first First derivative, so so in fact I can this this is explicit. I can compute. Okay. okay, so then here's the theorem. So this is the theorem. Basically says that one plus two plus three prime uh, implicitly Determines determine the ring structure. It means that there's an algorithm, but it's not explicit. This is first, and also um, this, uh, this 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 classes. For i, also for gamma. Uh, generate generate uh, a cohomology ring as a ring. Okay. okay. 
So, uh, so the, the idea is, I mean, it's not idea. What, what is, what, what? Three prime is also true. Yeah, three prime is also true. Yeah. So that's a theorem also. That's a theorem, yes. Three prime is a theorem, yeah. So that's a theorem. Yeah, that's, yeah, theorem, yeah. It's a lemma, okay. It's, proof is short, so it's a lemma. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so what I'm saying is um, the geometry of the Hilbert schemes can be translated into three algebraic uh, expressions. One is Hessenberg. Second is the first term class as operator has this expression. Third, this basically ice chunk character of the tautological ve vector bundle. This is called tautological vector bundle, basically. Has this commutation relation. Okay, so, so all of these come from geometry. Once we use the geometry to prove these algebraic expressions, then our theorem says that the cohomology ring basically implicitly determined by these three relations. So, so three prime come from three? Uh, no, proof, no, it's not coming from three. Proof is the same. Proof, yeah, okay. Proof is the same. Yeah. Okay, so, um, so the, 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 the second, second part determines the ring. The, the, the second part is basically we says that we prove the manifold principle. Oh, let me see. Uh, K, no, no, yeah, yeah. K is I. Oh, okay. K, K is I. K is I. Yeah. Let's make it a K. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so, um, so this second part just says that the method principle holds for the Hilbert scheme. Uh, so, so that means that this, this, the corollary of this says that to understand the cohomology ring, we can study, we, can, we should study this operator. Express in terms of Hessenberg. If we can, we understand the ring structure because the, the cohomology is generated as a vector space by the Hessenberg creation operators. If we, we can represent the, 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 the generators of the ring in terms of Hessenberg operators, then we know how the generator acts on each element of the vector space. So therefore we know the ring structure. No, uh, it, okay, so uh, there are many th stuff. So, uh, so there is a G gamma N, mm -hmm. that's a cohomology class. Mm -hmm. Then I add them together, I call the G gamma. Right. So N disappears. Yes. Yeah, so what I'm, then I take, so this is a cohomology class, it has many components. Right. So the I means this component. Right. Okay, so, so, so these components generate the cohomology ring. Of, of xn, for fixed n, okay. And this operator, I add n together, as operator, should be expressed in terms of Heisenberg operators. Yeah, because when I talk about the operators, I should do similar like this. So this, this is my first term class. It acts from here to here. But I should add them all together for all the n. Therefore, it adds from edge to edge. From edge to edge, I have a Heisenberg action. There's no Heisenberg action from here to itself. Heisenberg will increase n to n plus i, for example. So that's why I have to add them together. I want to express all the things interesting in terms of Heisenberg operators. So it has to go to edge. So this is an action from edge to edge. It's just a car product. So I want to know what this is. Okay, so now I can, so now I can list some of the results that we, it's not we, the people can do. Once we have this uh, uh, technology, so this is a new technology in some sense that uh, you use the algebra to study geometry, 
infinite dimensional Lie algebra. So this, all these results are coming from geometry, but uh, we want to get results in geometry. And using this, we, we hope we can get some uh, results on geometry. So, uh, so first, let's talk about uh, what we can do. First, people do on C2. So X can be non-compact. On C2, so there are two work, Lin, Sorgi, and uh, uh, Vasirot, Vasiro. So they determine the rain. Yeah. 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 So, so this GI gamma n, this is, uh, so this is going to generate the rain, right? Yeah, generate rain. Yeah. 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 In, in from a rain stack. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Of the, of the ring of uh, Xn? Xn, yeah. I see. Yeah. Determine the, the rain. And, and it's, uh, it, it's like the relation is determined by what? Uh, no, the, the, this is not relation. This, this, these are the. No, no. I, what I'm saying is, um, once we get one, two, three prime, we can use one, two, three prime to prove the theorem. Yeah, but like one, two, three prime gave you basic. I mean, at least one. They gave you how to multiply this g to the, to the, to the, to your. Um, that's you no, yeah, yeah, you, you, you can always multiply, but you have to prove that all the other cohomology classes can be generated in terms of uh, this. Through car product, right? Yeah, car product, yeah. Okay. So uh, Lin and Sorgi uh, Vassero determine the ring structure. Uh, by relating this ring structure to um, some um, some L some group th group stuff group theory group theory stuff of symmetric groups. Okay. So quite combinatorial. Okay. And also Lin uh, uh, determines he determines determines means have explicit formula. It's so not implicit determined. It really determines uh, the the chunk characters, chunk characters of C two in terms of uh, Heisenberg Heisenberg operators. So for C two. Okay. So uh, for non compact, so compact and non compact somehow is quite a different. Okay. So, so it's not strict uh, generalization of uh, compact. Com non compact compact. People have to work on different cohomology theory, so it's different. So uh, here, I um, so we can we can do the cotangent bundle of a curve. C is a curve. The Riemann surface. We can also do um, uh, ALE space, which means you have C two modeled out by a finite group. This is a finite group of S L two C, and you take a resolution. This is called um, uh, ALE space. So all these are also determines the chain characters. Okay, so which means we find explicit expression for for this in these two cases. Oh, no, this, this is not, not the reason. No, no, no. This is another theorem. I should say this is uh, what, what I'm talking about is the, using this technology. This one, two, three. One, two, three prime. This is not, not coming from this theorem. I'm saying that using one, two, the technology from one, two, three prime, you can get other results. But, but, but I thought you already know the ring structure. No, I don't know the ring structure. I said implicitly determined. Yeah, implicit is far from <laughs> explicit. Oh, so yeah, so, one is so right? yeah, that's right. Implicit means that there's algorithm. So explicit means uh, I can write 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 out uh, as such. A generator. 
Yeah, no, I can, yeah, I can write, write explicitly. I have explicit formula. Uh -huh. Yeah, so for example here, means, I, I, say, I said that Lin determines this Chen character means that they, there is explicit formula for Chen character in this fashion. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Also here, for the for 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 this case, for this case. So I want I want to make a remark that this case, in fact, are all hypercalar. Okay. Hypercalar means this guy is uh, hypercalar. I don't know. This is not hypercalar. I should call this. <laughs> Uh, the, the, these are the cases where they are all have chemical class zero. Yeah, we can call hypercalar. I see. Yeah, hypercalar is fine. Hypercalar. All these have hypercalar. All these cases. They are hypercalar. So in certain sense, this um, this 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 guy is zero. When this guy is zero, somehow um, we can get explicit formula. For compact case, chemical class zero is the Casey surface. So for Casey surface, there's another paper by Lee and Asogi. Also determine, the determine, determine means explicitly determine the ring structure. This is determined. This determinant is also V similar to, uh, to their work in C2, V is on combinatorics, com combinatorics of the symmetric groups. Okay. So later we also determine this uh, K3. We determine this uh, determined V the term characters. Turn character operators. <coughs> Which means we have explicit formula for turn character operator for K3. I will not write it down the formula because it's very, very long, but it's very explicit. I think I should have asked this question yeah. earlier, but when you say it's a core model, is you use the Q coefficient or our Q coefficient? Uh, let me see. Uh, see, your Q coefficient is fine. Okay, yeah. At least we have to define. Something. Yeah, 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 that's right. Definitely Q. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. As long as we have a concept of chunk character and right, right. Things. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, that's right. In, 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 in fact, this is a kind of motive, motive because this operation coming from pull back, push forward of a subset. Right. That's yeah. Correspondence. yeah, correspondence, exactly. Yeah, these are correspondence. Yeah. You can also do in other cohomology theory whenever you have pull back, push forward. Okay, so uh, so what is unsolved? Unsolved is for arbitrary surface X, where the chemical class is not zero. Okay, so this is still unsolved. Um, other works related to this. So other works. So one can always work on equivalent stuff. You can talk about the equivalent. Unsolved means I don't have explicit expression for Chen character operators, even though I said implicitly determined, but I don't have ex explicit formula. So other works, uh, equivalent setup. So equivalent setup, so if you have, a, for example, if I see star action um, um, on C2, for example, uh, in, in this way, x, y equals t alpha x minus alpha uh, t uh, beta y. For example, you have this uh, uh, action. Then you can talk about the equivalent. So everything can, can, can what can do equivalent? So everything goes through 
an equivalent setup. But there's some new stuff coming out. The new stuff is the fixed points. The fixed points of the action, I call that C lambda, inside the Hilbert scheme. So what is a lambda? Lambda is a partition of n. It can be proved that this guy corresponds to in a case where this action is copy out action, which means that alpha is one, beta is one, which means the action is really t minus x ty. In this case, this corresponds to something called a sure polynomials, sure functions. For those who um, study a little bit of uh, uh, poly, uh, symmetric polynomials, uh, orthogonal polynomials, that's one of the polynomials called the sure polynomials. So that's, that's, uh, that's one phenomenon. And uh, in other cases, so I, in general case, general case, general weights, means alpha beta is arbitrary, you can prove that the fixed points, in fact, corresponds to something called the Jack polynomials in the theory of symmetric functions. So there's something new pop up in the Euclid variance setup. And uh, yeah, so 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 what 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 else when 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 do a Hilbert scheme? One can also do um, the so-called quantum. cohomology cohomology of the Hilbert scheme or, or something like we compute gromov witten invariance of Xn. That's one research that a lot of people uh, work on this quantum cohomology of the Hilbert scheme. And uh, we also, some people work on um, um, uh, some, some algebra, algebras coming from, co coming from this, coming from, from this. Let me just, just mention one thing that uh, it has an impact also on algebra. So for example, if I take a derivative of, uh, of, uh, of this guy, Remember, derivative by definition is just commutation relation with the boundary operator. This definition. I have this expression. In fact, this can be computed easily. It is n minus m. No, sorry. sorry. This is, no, 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 m. This is n ln alpha uh, then minus n Okay, so this is just a chemical class cup with alpha. Derivative is a commutation relation. Of, uh, yeah, yeah, this definition. So what is this? This, in fact, can be proved to be very sorrow, very sorrow operator. Okay, so derivative of um, Heisenberg is a very sorrow. Yeah, there's some results. Yeah, okay. Uh, maybe I, I, I mentioned it a bit. So um, in a case where, so first, for one point, GW is computed by uh, um, me and my collaborator, Chin. And uh, on the equivalent, C star equivalent, On C2, you uh, could write one more written on um, Hilbert scheme of C2. This is done by a uh, panda panda. Uh, 
and Alconcov, so Alconcov, Alconcov. One point means uh, one mark point. One mark point, genus zero. One mark point, genus zero. Yeah, I, I, because we only talk about quantum cohomology. Genus zero. I only compute genus zero. Uh, in fact, also extremal. I will, uh, I don't know. I have time. I don't have. I don't know. I have time to talk about. It's not all one point, but extremal one point. I'm sorry. So that's quantum cohomology. Do you know quantum cohomology? No, I don't know. Quantum have to have three points. Right. Yeah. Have three points. Yeah. Yeah. Three <laughs> mark points. Oh, okay, this one point. Yeah. One this point. is one mark point. Okay. okay so, so so basically. Quantum. Quantum. Yeah. Uh, I think one point only. This is a two points. Basically, it's a two points. Okay, uh, Malik and his collaborator, I forgot his name, uh, or something, not Okonkov, some, somebody else, Okonkov student maybe, computed uh, for, for, for C star equivalent for uh, Cn mod C some D, uh, C2 mod some GD, then take a, uh, take a group more weighting, uh, the, the, the chunk characters. So uh, th all these are, are, are you can see they, they use uh, equal, you use localization. But they also need the two points, right? Uh, no. So that's the results on Gromov Grom between variants. So we still need to do three points. Once we do three points, we get uh, quantum cohomology. Do you have like conjecture? What's the, what's the result supposed to be? Yeah, there's a conjecture. It's a run conjecture. <laughs> Ryan Yongbin, your brother. <laughs> okay, so I already over the time. So I stop. Maybe you ask a question. There's a question session. You can maybe talk five minutes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let me talk about run conjecture. Okay. So um, I don't have time to uh, to to talk about the many stuff here. But um, I, as I said, the, the Hilbert scheme also relates to orbit fold. Okay, so this is orbit fold. So once you have orbit fold, then there's an orbit fold cohomology called a turn round cohomology, also defined by your brother. <laughs> run, turn round cohomology. So turn round cohomology is defined in terms of uh, combinatorics information of the symmetric group in this case. Okay, so this is a really combinatorial. Okay, so uh, there's a McKay correspondence. I think people probably know in a simple case where you see two, you take a gamma, you take a resolution of that. Then the cohomology here relates to uh, some, some uh, a group information about the gamma. That's called a McKay correspondence. So you should have the same thing here. So Ryan has a conjecture saying that if X is Kähler, hyper Kähler, then the, then, then, then the quantum cohomology here, no sorry, the cohomology here and the quantum uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the Chen-Rang cohomology are the same. So if, if it is not, if x is arbitrary, if this is not zero, then they are not the same. So he conjectured that there's a correction term corrected by the following thing. So he defined something called a kind of a part extremal global written quantum cohomology. So this consists of um, so this, this is the ordinary cohomology, the car product is different. So what is the car product? Car product is defined as such. It's defined as, so um, if, uh, I don't know, I mean this maybe take too much, uh, no, take too much uh, time to explain, but um, okay, let me see this. Okay, so let me just uh, wave hands. So this is a contraction. Can be proved that this is extremal contraction 
has only extreme one, one extreme array. This extreme array is generated by generated by this kind of uh, P1, which is isomorphic to um, pi inverse of uh, two point co coincide, the other points are different. So as I said last time, this isomorphic to P1 consists of all the tangent directions at this point P. So that's P1. So this, let's call this beta. Then you can talk about uh, genus zero, three point, mark point Xn, D beta. So this are, you, you compute all the gromov witten invariants on this modular space, GW on this modular space. Those are called extremal, extremal gromov witten invariants. So you use those extremal gromov witten invariants to define the car product, make a correction. So that's this, 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 this is this definition. Okay, so correct it by, by extremo GW invariants. So his conjecture says that this is isomorphic to the, co the orbit for cohomology as a ring, not as, L I mean, as, a, as vector spaces is, is known as a ring, as rings. Okay, so in, in that setup, so uh, we, are, we are computing these uh, invariants, extreme invariants, in order to, to verify that this is true. So now, so far, we are reached to the stage where we are two points. Okay, if we can compute the three points, then we see that probably this is true. Yeah, so, so this is a part of this, uh, can be regarded as a part of that. Okay, I stop. Okay, thank you.